okay, Eve bit of the fruit Mm -hmm. and then offered it to Adam. And thus, when he partook of it, sin began. Okay, why were they so ashamed to see each other naked? The cover-up began right there. I mean, why were they ashamed to see each other naked? Well, I don't know if they were ashamed to see each other naked, but I do believe that something changed within them. God said, the day you eat of the tree is the day you'll die. And they ate of the tree, they didn't fall down dead, but something inside of them died, their spirit did. And that's why Jesus said to Nicodemus in John chapter three in the New Testament, marvel not that I say to you, you must be born again. And then Jesus goes on and explains to Nicodemus, just as you had a natural water birth, there's a spiritual birth as well that you need to experience. Because you see, what died in man in the garden is the faulty of man still to this day. We have an old sin nature. We're born with it. It isn't that we sin and it makes us sinners. When we sin, it proves what we are. And there's a big difference. So actually going back then and understanding, why did they run and hide themselves? I believe they hid themselves from God. Because again, they were guilty. They had that yuckiness on them. They knew that. And I believe that, again, their eyes were opened to the reality of rebellion to God. Your thoughts, Scott? Yeah, exactly, Mike. And you know what's interesting is um, the nakedness. Uh, and, and you're exactly right, Katie. They, they were naked you know, before they had sinned. What's the difference now? A guilty conscience, a conscience full of guilt and shame before the Lord. And so their physical nakedness, what it became was a symbol of their guilt and shame that they felt in their mind um, and in their hearts because they had disobeyed God's commands, uh, and especially his command to uh, not eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And in fact, they were so guilty and ashamed of what they did um, and felt that shame because uh, they tried to cover themselves up with fig leaves. And then they ran and hid behind the trees uh, because the Bible tells us that God came and approached them and especially approached Adam. He, he dealt with Adam first saying, Adam, where are you? But the Bible tells us that God would come and meet with them in the cool of the day. And so God showed up at the same time every day he did. He showed, showed up that day at the same time at the same place, but yet they were trying to cover their sins, but yet still even with putting on the fig leaves and hiding behind the trees, it still was not enough. There was nothing they could do to remove the guilt and shame they felt from disobeying God. And so that's why if you keep reading the text, you'll find out that what God does after, and I think this is very important, Mike, after they confess their sin, God does confront Adam, he confronts Eve, and they do confess their sin. They, they say what they did. And so it's interesting that after they confessed their sin, that God then provided for them a coat of skins. And in order to provide those coat of skins, God would have had to kill an animal. So what we see there is the first, first mention of animal sacrifice, the first mention of the innocent dying for the guilty, the first mention of the atonement, a covering for sin. And so uh, God provided them coats of skins to put on their bodies it is also the beginning of where we get the whole idea of humans wearing clothes. <laughs> That's where it comes from. God provided clothes from the animals for Adam and Eve, but it was also a dual purpose uh, because, again, he sacrificed that animal, the innocent dying for the guilty, shedding its blood, and those skins becoming a covering, not only physical, but also the animal becoming a covering or an atonement for the sins of of Adam and Eve. And, and, you know, we do know um, that Adam and Eve, you know, when God confronted them, you know, if you read what Adam and Eve said, um, that's exactly what happened. The woman gave to Adam, he ate, disobeyed God, and the serpent deceived the woman. Paul actually confirms this in 1 Timothy, uh, in, in when he writes to 1 Timothy, uh, there in chapter uh, 2, I believe it is. Uh, he confirms all of this, and so what we see is the principle that we find in Proverbs. I'm trying to remember the exact proverb, but there's a proverb that says, if we forsake 
And if we confess and forsake our sins, then we'll find mercy. Uh, but if we don't, then we shall not prosper if we try to hide our sins. And so uh, anytime we confess our sins, God is always faithful and just through what Christ has done for us uh, to cover our sins and to cleanse us from all that unrighteousness. So we see that all the way going back to Adam and Eve and that whole incident. Mike? Hope that helps.